Hello, my beautiful children, and uh, welcome to your sequence tutorial. Just one quick side note. By the time this video comes out, it'll be about early May. We'll have a couple of weeks left in the semester for many people in college, maybe an entire month left or so for high school students. And, uh, you know, I've already issued all my final project handouts to all my students in the various classes. For those of you who are wrapping up your semesters and struggling with final projects and drinking entirely too much coffee and wondering what it feels like to be well rested because it's been so long since you've had that feeling in your body. Good luck, good luck, good luck to you. The end is near. Okay, light at the end of the tunnel. I know right now it just looks like a pinhead. It's so far away, but it's there, okay? And, and you will get there, and you will soon be able to sleep more than three hours at a stretch. Good luck on your finals. Let's talk about sequins. Here's the thing, so every time I have a tutorial, I am, when I'm editing, I'm kind of in a constant, mild panic about how long the video is gonna be. You know, cause I have realistic expectations for people's attention on one subject matter. Remember, I've taught in the classroom for years. I know there's a point where your attention kind of slips, and so I try to keep my videos, you know, the thing is, is when I'm lecturing in person, like I do most of the time, I can catch when attention is slipping, cause I'm, but obviously I am not literally in the room with you, so I don't know, so I'm always trying to- Long story short, which apparently I am not good at, I split this tutorial up into two videos, okay, so that you can watch this one, digest, and then later when I release the second one, you can watch that, having this knowledge, etc., etc. If you are new to my channel and uh, you want an alert for when the next video comes up, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I have three basic methods uh, that I use to render sequin fabrics. The first method has three variations. I'm going to teach you all about how to make things sparkle and how to make things less shiny. And I'm going to cover how to do these things in a variety of media. So, two videos. Zoe, why do you have a million and three different ways of rendering sequins? Like, can't you just like pick the best one and then just show us that one and then call it a day? No. Number one, I'm a thorough person. Okay, somebody asked me for a denim tutorial and I showed you guys eight different ways of rendering denim with like a bunch of different media. Like, this is what I do. Number two, because I'm a design communicator and not a fashion illustrator, I don't have like one method that I just go through to just say, hey, these are supposed to be sequins. I am more exacting in the specific textures that I render. Three. Sequin fabrics are a category, not just one kind of fabric. They're not just, you know, all sequin fabrics are exactly the same, except for different colors, okay? There's a bunch of different kinds of sequin fabrics, and then so you're going to, in the future, look at your swatch. You're going to look at the methods that I show you guys and be like, okay, this is going to be the best method to replicate this specific sequin fabric. There are a bunch of sequin fabrics that are super sparkly and dazzly and shiny like these. So shiny! And then you have matte sequins that are much more subtle, okay? You don't have the bling. It's still shiny. I mean, it's not exactly, you know, a cotton linen blend. Shiny, shiny, subtle. Sometimes you'll have sequin fabrics that are overall filled like this, just jam-packed up against each other. Sometimes you're going to have patterns where we're, it's a solid fill up here, and then it comes in like dribs and drabs down the rest of her shirt. This one, uh, they're all jam-packed and laid perfectly diagonal, almost flush against each other. These sequins are super teeny tiny. These sequins are in perfect rows, so it almost looks like stripes of sequins. And for the love of God, somebody get me this jacket. It's amazing, and I, I absolutely need it in my life. And uh, if anyone wants to make it for me, email me. I will send you my measurements. Thank you very much. Then you have other sequin fabrics that are sewn into patterns like this. It, uh, it kind of looks random, but it's not. Like, can you see the heart? 
And then these, the sequins are sprinkled randomly, not jam-packed perfectly in rows or anything. Sequins are these little plastic discs with a hole punched through them and sewn down like so. But paillets are typically much bigger and if they're punched in the middle and sewn down, that thread is super obvious and kind of ugly. And so typically with paillets, you will have it punched through the center with some kind of bead, or it will be punched in at the top and then sewn to dangle. These are paillets that have been punched through the center with a bead. Here's an awesome top that has both. So you have the larger paillets that are punched through the top and dangled, overlapping, and then you have these that are punched through the middle with a bead. Here are some others where they're sewn along the top in overlapping stacks, so they look kind of like mermaid scales. Here's another example where it's less perfect rows, but still have the overlapping scales. This is my favorite I call it the Jungle Boogie Rainbow Sequin Tuxedo of Joy. These are not sequins. These are beading, okay? And I'm going to do a whole video on beading per subscriber request later this year. FYI, right now, the subscriber queue is to the end of January. Later this year, I'm going to do a whole video on beading. But, you know, if you have an all-over beading style like this, like the dress, not the necklace, you can... Typically approach it like you approach sequins. This is chain mail. That's a whole different category altogether. You've seen that there are a lot of variations in sequin fabrics. And so I'm going to show you a bunch of different techniques. You are going to look at your swatch and figure out which method is going to work the best for you. And uh, sometimes you're going to merge methods, you know, take a little of method number two and add that to method number three, whatever. I see students do that all the time to great effect. No problem. So today's method is centered around this concept. Sequins are basically textured, shiny fabrics. So we're going to start with shiny fabrics and we're going to add texture to them. And then, you know, the number one rule of rendering textured fabrics, highlights and shadows must reflect the texture of the base fabric. So you cannot have a textured fabric and then have a smooth shadow, okay? That fights with visually with the whole look, right? So if you have a furry fabric, then your shadows must be rendered furry. If you have a chunky, nubbly knit, then your shadows must also have the same chunky, nubbly texture. With your sequins, we're gonna sprinkle sequins across the fabric, and you're gonna see that in the highlight and in the shadows. Now we start with our shiny fabrics. And I have a whole video showing you guys three different shine levels and how to render them. We have soft shine, okay, kind of things that are more luminescent. We have leathers, we have satins, silk charmeuses, you know, those kind of like faintly shiny things. And then we have super shiny, hard shine things where the shine is so bright that in the shine areas it literally looks white like pvc patent leather and then we have things that are kind of sit in the in between so if you're not familiar with how to do shiny fabrics i highly recommend that you go watch that video first and then come back to this i will wait these are two example renderings of method number one okay you're going to start with your shiny fabric and then you're going to sprinkle sequins on top now the first thing you need to do is draw your garment and apply your shine most people struggle with shiny fabrics simply because they don't know where to place their highlights and my shortcut to that is to place your shadows first most people understand where shadows are supposed to go because they've been doing it kind of a lot more so what I always do, regardless of the level of shine, is to place shadows before the highlight. So here's my light source for this one. And so my shadows sit on this side of the leg, this side of this leg, this underneath because it's tucked in the back. 
And then I put my highlights in the opposite places, which is this part of this leg and this part of this leg. And then the top of the stomach where it's nice and flat and facing the light. And then this part of this leg. And then not so much here because again, it's tucked away and kind of bent backwards. And then with this tuxedo jacket, again, my light source is over here. So my shadows are this side of the arm, this side of the body, drop shadow under the shawl collar, and then armpits are always dark, and then this part of the arm. And then my highlights are on the opposite. So this part of this arm and this part, this part and this part of the torso, top of the chest facing the light, this shoulder, which is the closest parts to the light, get the highlights. Bum, 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 bum. Doo, 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 doo. Where did I put my eraser? I've drawn three garments here, one for each level of shine. Soft shine, hard shine, and in-between shine. Now for this method, you can use any medium. The process in which to do this is the same for marker, for color pencil, and for paint. I'm gonna do this with marker because it's just the fastest way to show you guys. Now, what you're gonna need in terms of materials is you're going to need the same color but in different values. So here I did a series of cool grays. And then here I did this one in Prismacolors. This is their crimson red. The light red is their poppy red. And then I used their Tuscan red for the shadows and then black. I'm going to demo today using the Prismacolor Cool Grays range. And if you're using color pencils, Again, get a range of the same color but in different values. And if you are using paint, all you would have to do is to mix your darkest color and then separate them out into several wells and then add different amounts of water so that you're getting lighter and lighter values of the same color. I'm gonna start with the soft shine. For soft shine, we color the whole base fabric color. We add our shadows. And then we take a white color pencil or charcoal pencil and add soft highlights. This is my 40%. Of course, what you're going to do is you're going to match your base color to your fabric. Man, this marker is kind of getting dry. And then I'm going to take my 50% gray and I'm going to add my shadows. Here's my light source. So this part of the sleeve, armpits are always dark that roll shadow, tiny little separation shadow from the shawl collar. All of this will be dark because the torso is slanting away from the light. Sometimes I like to do double shadows, so I will take my 60% gray, one shadow up, and put in just some extra dark shadows where I think they will be. And then you're going to take your white color pencil and you're going to put in your highlight. This is my Caran d'Ache Luminance 6901 color pencil in white. And this is the brightest white out of all the color pencils I have found. So this shoulder and this whole part of the sleeve is super bright. Now, if you want something that's even more bright, which I mean, hi, this is soft shine. Why do you? But whatever. You can use a charcoal pencil. Highlight sitting there like that. Tiny bit in there, but not really, right? It's really more about this side is getting the highlights. So now we have our soft shine garment. And you're going to put in the sequins. Now, in every section, I took one color darker to put in the sequins. So this is my 40% gray. And so I'm gonna take my 50% gray and start putting in my sequins. And then in my 50% gray areas, I'm gonna use my 60% gray marker. And of course, at this stage, you know, you're going to follow the pattern of your swatch. If 
your swatch shows your sequins in perfect rows, then you're going to put your sequins in perfect rows. At this point, you're probably wondering, do I have to draw every single freaking sequin that is on my fabric? Uh, kinda. Here's the deal. Number one, you want to fill in the space with a lot of sequins if like enough sequins so that it reflects your fabric. When you look at something like this, you're assuming that all the sequins are jam packed together because there's so many. If your sequins are more widely spaced, you can do fewer sequins. Now in terms of the entire garment, yeah, you want to sprinkle sequins all across your entire garment. I'm going to say that you need to fill in at least 85% of your garment with sequins. If you are going for design communication, if you only do one section of your garment in sequins, then people will misconstrue that as a design space where you have a certain section of sequins or beading, and then the rest of it is blank. So you have to spray your sequins across the entire garment so that it reads like, oh, this is sequins all across the garment. This one has fewer sequins than this one, but it still reads like, oh, there's sequins across the whole thing, and that's the effect that you want. And then in my super dark areas, I'm going to take my 70 and put in my sequins. And then I'm going to take a white gel pen and I'm going to put in my white sequins in my highlight areas because that's where the shine is going to catch the sequins facing the light. And I like to let them kind of overlap and flow so that it doesn't look like a perfect crisp edge. So that kind of bleeds and you know, you're gonna sprinkle some errant sequins in the rest of the areas because some of them are just gonna, you know, dangle and catch the light and whatnot. Obviously I'm only just doing this sleeve for the purpose of brevity, but then you would go in and draw your drapes and design details like seams and if you wanted something more sparkly, which I highly recommend, you would do sparkle crosses. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, this one has a little too many. I was, go like, this one I did in class during demo, and I went a little bit crazy demonstrating sparkle crosses, but <laughs> I love sparkle crosses because I love sparkly things. Shh, don't tell anybody. Okay. Now, sparkle cross, you could do sparkle crosses like this where they flick and taper out. You could do sparkle X's, which some people like to do. I've seen some that look more kind of more precise like this. Those are also really pretty. So you can choose your medium with sparkle crosses. You can sharpen your color pencil really well and do sparkle crosses in color pencil like I did here. You can do them in white gouache like I did here with a tiny little paintbrush and I will demo that in the second video because I'm gonna paint in that one. I'm gonna do color pencil and paint in my second video. And then, or you could take a white gel pen and as you noticed, the gel pen shows up better against darker ground because white on white doesn't really show up. Be careful of where you're placing your crosses. And if you have a big block of white, it's okay to put in a sparkle cross with pencil because it's really about that contrast, right? And there's your soft shine sequin sleeve. You can see the difference, how this one is such a blingy sleeve, real contrasty, and this one is more subtle. This one is my hard shine, and this is the back view of a pencil skirt. With my hard shine process, I'm gonna use the same colors again, but I start with the shadow. I'm gonna take my 60% gray, my light source is over here. I'm going to lay down my shadow this side of her body. Wow, my marker's kind of dry. And of course, under her bum, and then the underside of these drapes coming from her hip as she's walking, and then these drapes a little bit. Next, I'm going to take my 20% gray, which I'm going to use as my halo color, and I'm going to circle my highlights with my halo color. If you don't know what that means, you probably should go watch my shine video. 
this video is going to be long enough as it is. Okay, so my highlight's going to sit across the top of her butt, and so I'm going to take my halo color and surround that highlight shape with it, and of course, closer, more on this side here, and then some of these drapes coming across is going to get that halo color, and then a highlight across this part of her thigh, and then a little bit here because her calf is coming forward and lifting the skirt to face the light. I'm going to kind of make my highlight and halo colors a little bit bolder, broader. And then I'm going to take my, my base fabric color, which is my 40. You're going to go up to the halo and cover the shadow and kind of put all that together. You know, I think this highlight's getting a little bit too big, so I'm going to close that up. Remember, you want to air on the big side, and then you can close things up as you need to later on. And then I'm going to kind of soften those edges a little bit and close that highlight a little bit. Da, 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 da. There's your hard shine pencil skirt. And then you're going to do exactly the same thing that we did here, which is take the color that is one shade darker than the background color to pop in your sequins. With paint, keep in mind always, always, always that you need your paint to be 367% dry in between steps. So I'm going to take my 20%, which is my halo color, and I'm going to fill in the highlight areas with my sequins. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, I make all these sing-songy noises in class. Here is my 40% gray, which is my base fabric color, and I'm popping in the sequins in my halo areas now. And again, if it overlaps a little bit, it's fine. And again, remember that you need to follow the pattern of your sequin fabric. Here's my 50, and I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to do the same exact thing. Just go one shade darker in every space. Until I end up with this. This is exactly the same method as this. A hard shine where I place the shadow and place my highlights and... I'm going to either choose color pencil, gel pen, or gouache to put in my sparkle crosses or sparkle X's. This is my medium shine fabric. Again, my light source is over here. And we're going to, once again, take our shadow color, which is our 60%, and we're going to lay down the shadow. So along this side of her body, Oh my God, note to self, get a new 60% gray. Bottom half of her bust, this side of her torso, across the drapes, always the armpits are dark. If you don't know anything about where I'm placing my shadows, I have a video called Making Your Figures 3D with shading or shadows or however the hell I titled that one. <laughs> I'll drop the link in the comments, don't worry. All right, and again, I'm taking the 20% cool gray, which is the halo color from this one. And I'm going to place my highlights. So my highlights are not bright white, like the heart shine one. And my highlights are not just soft white color pencil like this one in between. So top of the chest, you know, this side of her body, all of this facing the light kind of in between these drapes. Again, take your base fabric color, which is your 40%, and you're going to cover the shadow and not cover the highlights. 
butt up against them. Making my highlights look a little bit like lightning. It has that kind of crisp look to the fabric. I'm getting in here so then I can blend out some of this 60%. You know, some fabrics, some shiny fabrics are gonna have highlights that look a little bit like lightning. Some of them are gonna look really smooth and glossy. And it really depends on the fit of the, the dress or garment and how crinkly and crisp the fabric is. So again, number one rule, observe what your specific fabric is doing. I can just, I can only render so many examples, you know? And at some point, I have to let you guys fly on your own. <laughs> Soften some of these edges a little bit, 50. Blending that in a little bit. I'm going to take my 20 again and kind of blend those edges a little bit. So we have our medium shine fabric. And then once again, exactly the same, you're going to take one shade darker to pop in your highlights. This is my 40 and I'm going to go in into my 20 areas and I'm going to put in my sequin and so forth and so forth and so forth. In these ways, you can create sequin fabrics in varying levels of shine. This is my 50 sitting on top of my 40. And then after I filled in all my sequins, I'm going to draw in my garment details and add my sparkle crosses. And even with these two, sometimes I will take my white gel pen and I'll just punctuate some shine areas with some white sequins. It's like these are my super shiny little spots. All right, and so now we have method number one, creating sequins by approaching it like a textured shiny fabric in three levels of shine. Questions, check the info box. As usual, if it's not there, drop me a comment. Hit the subscribe button if you want to alert for when I uh, post the second sequence video. I'm going to show you two more methods. I'm going to show you guys how to do things with color pencil and with paint. Happy fun, good times. All right, to all the pretty sparkly things your little sparkly heart could desire. Okay. And uh, yeah, hashtag always be practicing. And I will see you next time.